Welcome to the 2020 debate between the candidates for Essex Board of Selectmen. We're being recorded by Zoom by the production team at 1623 Studios. I'm Erica Brown, editor and publisher of The Cricket, and I will be moderating the forum today. The debate has been organized by the Essex Lions Club and the Cape Ann Chamber of Commerce, along with 1623, and we thank them for doing this. It's a great service to voters to meet the two candidates for selectmen, Guy Bradford and Peter Hoare, who are each vying for one seat up for election on the Board of Selectmen. The election itself is Monday, June 22nd. The polls will be open from noon to 6 p.m. at the Essex Fire Station on Martin Street. That said, town officials are strongly encouraging residents this year to vote by mail because of the COVID-19 coronavirus. Time is running short for those who want to vote by mail, but you can download an application form online at the town's website or by picking up a blank form in a box that has been set up outside of town hall by town clerk Pamela Thorne. At the end of the program, we'll provide more details on absentee voting. The format for today's debate will be as follows. The two candidates will be invited first to introduce themselves directly to you, and then we'll ask them to respond to five questions about important quest issues facing Essex. They'll have three minutes each to answer. If they go over time, I will display this card. The questions were solicited ahead of time by the community at large, and we've provided these questions ahead to the candidates, so there are no surprises. We hope that through this program, the voters will learn more about each candidate and what they hope to do for the town. With all that business out of the way, let's meet the candidates. In alphabetical order, first, I'll introduce Guy Bradford and then I'll ask him to provide an overview himself. Guy Bradford um, is a career corporate man who moved to Essex with his wife, Karen, in 2014 after nearly two decades working at American Eagle Outfitters. Um, when he left, he had been a global supply chain compliance officer for the company professionally. Bradford had to work, work out differences between complicated regulations, logistics, corporate goals, and partner agendas. And now he's retired, um, living in Essex, and Bradford has served on the Essex Finance Committee since 2018. And now he says he'd like to apply his expertise to issues facing Essex like tax rates, affordability, and the town's biggest budget items. Now, Guy, that was me introducing you, but why don't you speak, please, and introduce yourself and provide an overview. Thank you very much. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to uh, thank Richard and the Lions Club for, for arranging this, this uh, meeting. And uh, I'd also like to uh, thank uh, Lisa for stepping in as the moderator. Uh, I, I have to say, uh, she, she learned more about me in 30 minutes, in, in a 30 minutes interview for the cricket than I, than I really thought was possible. So I think she uh, certainly seems well qualified to write us through this. Uh, as, as Erica said, my wife Karen and I moved to Essex in 2014. I've been serving on the town's finance committee since 2018, but now I want to increase my contribution to the town by serving on the board of select. Uh, prior to retirement, I worked for uh, about 20 years at American Eagle Outfitters, a $4 billion dollar specialty retailer. My training and early experiences there were finance related, but the scope of my work gradually broadened and I spent an increasing amount of time developing and managing various corporate compliance programs. These mm -hmm. included a program on social responsibility, that is working with our factories to assure the workers making our goods were treated ethically and fairly. I also developed a sustainability uh, uh, policy designed to minimize the impact of our manufacturing processes processes on the global environment. And finally, after 9-11, I worked with the Department of Homeland Security to put in a place policies to assure the physical security of our products as they move through the supply chain. In many ways, I saw my role at uh, AEO as one of brand protection, acting in a way that promoted not only the company's business interests, but also assured our brand was associated with doing things ethically, responsibly, and the right way. Uh, now, the time I've spent on the Finance Committee has really has been extremely valuable to me, 
and hopefully to the town as well. For me, it was a tremendous opportunity to quickly become exposed to the town's operations and learn about the issues it's faced with. As for the town, my business background ex experience with emphasis on building reasoned, practical solutions to complex problems have helped the committee, I think, to provide sound financial advice to the board and the town. With the onset of the pandemic and the stress it will bring to bear on the town, I feel this experience will be even more valuable. This ability to manage an open-minded, non-judgmental approach to issues is a critical requirement in a town like Essex, where our modest size and tax base make it difficult to balance competing requirements against the desire to keep taxes affordable for all our citizens. I think I've been able to use this sort of practical reasoned approach during my time on the Finance Committee and plan on continuing to do that if selected to the Board of Selectmen. Six years ago, Karen and I made an affirmative decision to move to Essex after retirement. Our choice of Essex as the place to spend the rest of our lives was driven by our positive feelings for the town, its surroundings, its culture, and its people. We want very much for Essex to retain those special qualities that attracted us here, and to the greatest extent possible, I'll work as a selectman toward that goal, while at the same time working to develop a vibrant business environment in the town. Thanks. Thank you, Guy. The other candidate for running for Board of Selectmen is Peter Hoare. Peter also brings a lot of operational experience and practical experience to the table. He's a serial entrepreneur, and Hoare says he knows a lot about managing people, projects, and budgets in highly competitive fields. He was the Director of Business Development for American Medical Response before starting Easy Care, Amb Ease Care Ambulance Service in South Boston, serving as its Chief Operations Officer. He then started Sweet Paws Rescue locally here in 2011 with a partner. And then two years ago, he opened Barn Dog Day Camp on Southern Avenue. Hoare has also served as an EMT here in Essex uh, with the Essex Fire Department. Um, and he signed up for it soon after moving in 2012 and he's served there ever since. Thank you, Peter. Why don't you introduce yourself? Thank you very much. And uh, thank you to the Lions Club and the uh, Chamber of Commerce and yourself for putting this on. This is a, a great opportunity for folks to get to uh, get a little peek into uh, what Guy and myself are all about. But as you mentioned, I, I moved to town in 2012 and I know many people in town. I'm a people person. Uh, so some of you, uh, are hopefully many of you will recognize me. But I thought I would take this opportunity to give you a little bit about, uh, expand on uh, my background and some of my qualifications that I think will serve me well if I'm elected as a selectman. I actually began my career in the early 90s, first as an EMT in Boston, because uh, I felt the need to help serve people. I was did that job for just about a year before I was promoted up into an entry-level management uh, job. So I'm a, a ground-up, uh, inspirational kind of career story. So I got a, a entry-level sales job and I in the ambulance industry, and I just built from there until I was a, a regional sales manager. And then, uh, as mentioned, uh, I co-founded East Care Ambulance in 1998. Now, that was a company I co-founded with uh, several other uh, colleagues we started with 30 employees and about six ambulances. And we built that up to have uh, over 600 employees and 100 ambulances by the time we sold it in 2012. Uh, so I held various uh, professional jobs in that uh, organization. Uh, as an entrepreneur and a small business owner, you have to learn every aspect of the business from human resources to sales and marketing to operations. Uh, the company that bought uh, Ease Care asked me to stay on for a period of four years. Uh, I did, I served as their chief operations officer managing uh, over 600 people. Uh, very challenging with all the different personalities. 
I think that management experience is would serve me well if elected here in Essex. Uh, that company again sold uh, to Brewster Ambulance and I stayed on for the last two years of my career as a senior strategy officer, helping with corporate strategy for the, the new owners uh, in before I retired this past November. In preparation uh, for retirement, I decided to own uh, start my own business and follow up on my love of dogs from Sweet Paws Rescue and decided that uh, I would open a business here in Essex. So I built a barn on my property and opened in 2017 uh, and built some great enthusiasm, great reputation around town and on Cape Ann. And uh, that business is thriving today. Uh, hopefully I don't know too many of you through my service as an EMT and firefighter for town. I uh, signed up as soon as I moved to town to, you know, I feel like uh, I had the skills and uh, to help serve my neighbors in their time of need. Uh, so when that pager goes off at two in the morning, I'm one of the guys that gets out of bed and comes through your kitchen door. So you're half, you're having a bad day if you have the fire department come through your door at two in the morning. But I'm driven to do it. I'm happy to do it. I uh, serve with some incredible people on the fire department, very dedicated. And when this seat for selectmen came open, I uh, thought, what can I do next to serve the town of Essex? And I feel that I am obligated to step up because I feel I'm highly qualified for the position and would do a great job uh, to serve as selectmen. But keep in mind, it's not, uh, as I view this position, it's not necessarily what I feel is in the best interest of Essex. I think the selectmen should be a vehicle for the community. So for what you folks feel are important, important issues, I think the selectmen should help uh, pave the way for those things to happen. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Now, on to our five questions. As a reminder, I will ask the question, and each candidate will have three minutes to answer. We'll begin with Guy Bradford. Guy, the first question, please prioritize three major challenges that are facing the town, and what solutions do you propose to meet those challenges? Consider that some challenges come with a price tag. Okay, uh, the three major challenges I see are, are number one, balancing uh, the pressures to grow in the, uh, for the town while preserving the charm and desirability of, of the town. The second is managing the cost of our public school system. And third, the high vul vul vulnerability of Essex to the effects of climate change and sea level rise. First challenge really calls for more collaborative government in my view. We have great town employees and engaged residents who make uh, many committees in Essex, but we need to work together to balance out growth and preservation objectives. The Essex Merchant Group focuses on promotion of the town and identifying and implementing pro-business measures. We also have cons conservation and community preservation committees. I propose we bring the efforts of these groups together by having more frequent and facilitated joint meetings to tackle various town objectives smartly. We, we have a quarterly uh, meeting of all committees and groups headed up by the Board of Selectmen. I would, I would strongly urge that we expand that uh, and, and have it be more engaging uh, with the various committees. Uh, second, on the cost of public education, uh, the assessment of the district is about half of our town spending. Clearly, education is critical, but it's true that the growth in our educational costs have averaged over three and a half percent in recent years. We have to live in a world of prop two and a half and the rest of our budget gets squeezed year in and year out. I would push our school administrators to find ways to reduce the growth in educational costs. The third challenge of climate change is difficult. As a small town with limited resources, we are not going to fix the problem. We can only hope to manage it. 
I propose we establish an Essex Climate Change, climate change Trust to be funded each year from free cash. This money would be invested with a sustainability investment mandate to be used for funding these long-term costs down the road. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. So Peter, same question for you. Um, would you please prioritize the three main challenges that are facing the town and what solutions do you propose to meet those challenges? And again, consider that some challenges will come with a price tag. Sure. We, uh, well, we're in a unique time uh, right now uh, with COVID. So uh, if you would have asked me six months ago, I probably would have had a different answer for this question. But right now, I think uh, we have to initially focus on COVID reentry, I'll call it. And we have to, of course, do that safely. But we have to make sure, and it's already started, that we get all our businesses opened up again. Uh, we also have to, you know, the COVID has had a significant impact on uh, dollars coming to town. So we want to make sure we've exhausted every possibility for grants, money from the CARES Act that might be able to go to the schools, or there might be FEMA grants. We would just want to make sure we've exhausted every possibility to help us with that. And, you know, the businesses and restaurants are key. We have to make sure they financially survive because they continue, they will continue for years to come if they survive to contribute monies to the town. So those are very important things. As Guy mentioned, schools. Uh, Ongoing, I agree with them, the ongoing school budget is, is a significant number. But right now we have the uh, added uh, complex uh, problem of reopening the schools in COVID. So the initial guidance that came out last week seems uh, from the state seems uh, very difficult to implement. And particularly how would you know any city of town pay for those things? Talking about limiting class size to you know only 12 people in a class. We have to figure out how we would pay for PPE for uh, the teachers and the students. And we may have to add you know plexiglass and renovate uh, the schools to accommodate safe learning at home. So those are huge issues that need to be ironed out. Next week, the, the state will come out with some further uh, guidance on them. So we have to stay tuned on that. Um, a more long-term goal is uh, I think we have to make Essex a more business friendly place so we can attract additional business through promotion uh, to the town, eliminate roadblocks from them because that, you know, will ensure the survival of, uh, you know, of, of our town economically. Uh, but it's important, as Guy mentioned, I would agree, we also have to keep the feeling of Essex. Uh, the feeling of this community. It's a very special place. So it's going to be a balancing act and a, a selectman will uh, play a key role in that. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Peter. Question number two. What do you see as potential revenue sources to help maintain or reduce the tax rate in Essex over time? Guy? Thanks. Uh, I consider maintaining or reducing uh, the town's tax rate to be an extremely high priority. I know firsthand that we have residents who struggle to pay their quarterly tax bill. In my view, this is an exercise in both controlling spending and identifying new potential revenue sources. On the Finance Committee, we have devoted time exploring opportunities for new and increased revenue. For example, I know the proposed cell tower has been uh, controversial for a, for a host of reasons, but I guess my question is, why couldn't we put the tower on town property and earn the revenue ourselves? And why not deploy renewable energy sources such as solar panels and even windmills? I think we can monetize the town property and do it in a tasteful way. Separately, authorizing the operation of a marijuana shop within the town will earn more than $100,000 of additional revenue per year. Also, we must carefully control our spending. In the business world, especially in periods of financial stress, companies will all 
often will change the way in which they forecast and authorize spending. Rather than simply taking the existing budget as the model for future spending, they go back to ground zero to challenge the core assumptions behind each expense. I think we should be engaged in that sort of exercise. Finally, we, we need to limit and space out our capital projects and manage our debt by spacing debt burden e evenly from year to year. This is, uh, this is a topic that the Finance Committee has been engaged in, but, also, but uh, at, the end of time, at the end of the day, falls to the Board of Selectment to manage. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. Peter? What do you see as potential revenue sources to help maintain or reduce the tax rate in Essex over time? Yes, I, uh, back to the business community, I think uh, we have to continue to support the business community uh, and restaurants and so forth to, so they can con continue to thrive. Um, Guy mentioned the pot shop or the marijuana facility. Uh, that is uh, an excellent source of uh, revenue. Uh, initial Estimates were up to $300,000 a year to the town. I think they've been scaled back somewhat, but uh, if that uh, does get uh, open, we'll, we'll see, and that will be a nice revenue stream for the town. Do have some concerns about uh, that, but after speaking with the police chief, uh, I think those uh, security concerns are mitigated, and uh, with careful su super, uh, supervision, that uh, can be a successful business in our, in our town. Uh, we can look at the fee structure. Uh, the Finance Committee just talked about the fee structure in their meeting uh, um, on Tuesday night uh, around town. Make sure that uh, no fees are too high or no fees are too low. There may be opportunities, you know, for parking in the future and, you know, p possibly parking at the other for economic development down on the, what's called the Allen property, Southern Ave and uh, Main Street and the town parking behind the current fire station. There may be an opportunity to charge out of town residents uh, for parking to generate some uh, revenue. But uh, if I look back to my business uh, background and when, when you look at a budget and when times are tough, you either uh, find ways to increase revenue or uh, you cut your expenses. So as Guy mentioned, uh, we shouldn't just rubber stamp a, a budget year to year. Uh, we should make every, go through every single department in the town and make them fight for their budget. And there's no guarantee that, you know, just because you got it last year, you're going to get it this year. So we, you know, people uh, that work in, uh, on these town committees and work for the town, they're very dedicated and they've worked very hard but we have to start running the town like a business. So we need to take a, sh a sharp pen to, to our budget and uh, look for ways to save wherever we can. And we do have some large uh, expenditures, public safety building, uh, that's already in progress. We have to make sure that stays uh, on budget and on time. So um, some big tasks ahead of us, but thank you. Thank you, Peter. All right, we're going to switch gears now and talk about the Black Lives Matter, the Black Lives Matter movement. In light of the current unrest across the nation following the murder of George Floyd at the hands of police, what immediate actions will you make to ensure that within the Essex Police Department to address racial issues and implement anti-racism training? How will you ensure that people of color in Essex feel safe, having their voices heard? and have adequate representation. Guy, you have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to say I, I abhor the excessive and, and unnecessary use of, of violence that we have seen in, in, in recent weeks by law enforcement against people of color. But at the same time, I want to make clear the respect and admiration I have for our police department for their service to our community. I think the, the key takeaway from the current protests we are, we are seeing, which, which differentiate them from protests in the past, is the dramatic increase in participation 
from largely white communities such as our own. I think, I think this is because there is a, uh, a new dawning recognition from these communities that racial bias resides to one degree or another within all of us. Not the overt racial slurs and acts of bigger, bigotry which play out in the newspaper, but rather a much more subtle sense of us and them. A belief held by many of us that we are different from people of color and consequently have the right to treat them differently. This is the essence of racial bias. I would advocate for racial sensitivity and unconscious bias training for the entire town. Finally, given the nature of police work in general and the greater likelihood that they would be involved in confrontational situations, I recognize that the level and depth of training appropriate for a police department must, must be more specialized than for the public at large. I would work closely with the chief to assure, to assure that his department receives the necessary level of specialized training to meet new accreditation standards that are even now being, pro being proposed uh, at the state level. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. So to you, Peter, what immediate actions would you take to ensure, um, what immediate actions would you take to make sure are taken in within the Essex Police Department to address these issues? And how would you ensure that people of color in Essex feel safe having their voices heard and have adequate representation? Uh, I'd like to say first, I attended last night's vigil in town and I uh, want to thank the organizers for a, uh, a, a wonderful event for people to voice their concerns against, uh, you know, the, this tragedy that uh, happened to George Floyd. Like Guy, uh, I, you just can't fathom disgusted by that whole process. But to directly answer your question, I want to start by saying that I have 100% confidence in Chief Paul Francis. I've worked with him closely and all of the police officers for the last eight years on, uh, through my work through the fire department. Uh, in the last 20 years, I've you know, been poking around and I'm not aware of any charges of racism against our particular uh, police department here in Essex. Uh, chief Francis is a very, very progressive chief, and he has already started implementing uh, policies uh, referred to as the President's Task Force on 21st Century uh, uh, Policing Practices. That was uh, uh, enacted by President Obama. And those, uh, those 21st century practices have uh, six key points that have already been started uh, to be implemented in town. The first one is building trust and legitimacy. Second would be policy and oversight. Uh, third one is technology and social media. The fourth one is community policing and crime reduction. Fifth one, officer training and education. And six is officer safety and wellness. So we're doing a good job already. I'd be naive to think we couldn't do a better job. And I know uh, Chief Francis is committed to ongoing, continuous training, continuous quality improvement amongst the police department. So uh, I think we have a great relationship with the police department, and they're going to continue to train and expand on community policing to help foster those relationships with the, the people of Essex. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. All right. Fourth question, do you feel there's a need for a zoning study in Essex? Considering that there is local discussion regarding cell towers, pot shops, and adequate business parking, please talk about how you would address these issues in light of the fact that there is little to no zoning within the town. Guy. Uh, in a word, yes. Zoning uh, really is an effective means to address the challenge I outlined an earlier question, uh, balancing uh, between growth and preservation and aesthetics. Uh, unfortunately, I think Essex has been saddled historically with an extremely weak and ineffective set of zoning rules. The fact that we have no established zones for different uses 
means there are structures with different uses, residential, commercial, business, industrial, spread throughout the town. This has led to an inefficient and time-consuming process of review by the Planning Committee and or the Zoning Appeals Board for any, per any perspective change in use. It has also led to tension between residents and merchants and business people who reside in close proximity over issues like noise abatement. Good work has been done by the Economic Develop Committee, Development Committee and the Strategic Planning Committee as exemplified by the warrant to be voted on, uh, on this Saturday, allowing for the mixed retail residential use uh, within the newly established Essex Downtown Zoning District. And I would support an expanded zoning study to clearly establish zones of usage throughout the town and to further simplify the process for uh, uh, obtaining zoning approvals. Thanks. Thank you, Guy. Peter, do you feel there's a need for a zoning study in Essex? Absolutely. Uh, it's, a, it's a very complicated issue, but we definitely need to figure out what we have to do about zoning. It's complicated because uh, we already have everything intermingled. Uh, business, industrial, residential are all on top of each other already uh, due to the lack of zoning we've had uh, over the years in Essex. Uh, on a personal basis, I moved to Essex because of the lack of zoning and because I wanted to start a doggy daycare on my property. So I bought a house in the woods up on Southern Avenue and started my business, enjoyed that. Uh, but this same lack of zoning that benefited me has come around to kind of bite me a little bit and the property next to me sold and that is now an industrial use uh, uh, for all intents and purposes, which has really affected my own personal property value. But, uh, and that's just because of the lack of zoning uh, uh, in town. So that's affected me financially, personally. So I benefit on one side, but I um, take a hit on the other side. But uh, it, there's no easy solution. But uh, I think a lot of the a lot of energy and time uh, are spent by town officials trying to resolve problems that uh, arise uh, as a result of the tension between residences and businesses and the lack of zoning. So it uh, soaks up a lot of people's energy. So to study it and come up with some kind of solution, uh, I think it's imperative. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. All right, our final question. Climate change is causing permanent changes to the Great Marsh and Essex River. In light of the increasing and eminent need to dredge the Essex River so that commerce as well as pleasure access to the mouth of the river, river isn't impeded, how will you work with local and state governments to ensure the safety of boaters and access by emergency equipment from the Essex Bay into the river? Guy? Uh, thanks. Uh, uh, first of all, I'll admit that I'm not a frequent boater. I do have a 19-foot whaler, but don't use it as often as I should, probably because I'm deathly afraid of missing the tide and running aground, uh, as I did on my first trip out five years ago. Hmm. But although I don't speak with a high degree of uh, knowledge and experience, I do feel uh, that access of commercial emergency and pleasure boats into the Essex River is critical for the commerce of our town. I would start, start by working with stakeholders of other coastal towns that have had recent and successful efforts to complete dredging operations. I would learn what uh, were the factors in their success and would work to employ for the benefit of Essex. Also, if we were to establish an Essex Climate Change Trust, as I suggested earlier, I would make it available for use in any future dredging project. Thanks. Great. Peter, same question? Well, the Essex River is really, uh, it's the heart of Essex. We used to build huge ships uh, on the Essex River. And to any boaters that currently uh, utilize the river, you can't even fathom how they would get a 70, 80 foot uh, wooden ship out of dry dock and down the Essex River. Uh, 
in current conditions that the river is in. So um, there's no doubt uh, this should be a priority for us. Uh, there are environmental concerns, but those I think uh, can be uh, mitigated and uh, established, uh, established solution for that. Now some great work has already been done by many people on this. And in fact, we had a uh, town and worked uh, with Seth Moulton, uh, who submitted a bill in 2016. Uh, the bill like that didn't go anywhere. So I think we just need to re-engage people like Seth. He's already been out here. And he knows the story of our river. Uh, we can work with others like Bruce Tarr and, and, and Margaret Ferrante. Uh, so it's somebody who, I think it's important for somebody on the board of selectmen who can build those relationships with our state, local, and federal um, legislators because those are the folks we're going to need help from to get this project done. And those are the folks who are going to help us find the money to do uh, this kind of project. But I think it's just a project that we need to re-energize and bring back to the forefront or bring back up on the priority list for us, for us here in Essex. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks to you both. We've covered a lot of ground today. We've covered dredging. We've covered pot shops, we've covered Black Lives Matter, zoning, and uh, taxes. So thank you very much for all of your thought. Um, it wraps up our program. Thank you to Guy, and thank you, Peter, for your time um, today, and also, more importantly, for your service to the town of Essex and your desire to run for a seat on the Board of Select. As you both know, the town is only successful because of the volunteer efforts of many people, such as yourselves. Um, for everyone else, remember election day is Monday, June 22nd. The polls will be open on a limited basis from noon to 6 p.m. because of the coronavirus. Um, it will still take place in, at the Essex Fire Station on Mar Martin Street. But again, town officials are strongly encouraging residents to vote by mail this year because of the pandemic. So you should know that time is running short for those who want to vote by mail. Legally, voters can still submit an application until noon on June 8th, the 18th. You can download an application at the town's website, which is www.essexma.org, or the town clerk has blank paper forms that are located in a bin outside the front door of town hall. Voters should complete their form and they can place it in the drop box, which is also outside of town hall. Your ballot will be mailed to you. Completed ballots must be returned to the town clerk's office by 8 p.m. on June the 22nd. Any questions about any of these, just go to the website and either do a search in the top right-hand bar for absentee ballot or just go to the clerk's office. There's plenty of information. It's very clear. They've done a great job. So that wraps everything up. Thank you to the Essex Lions Club, of course, for putting this together along with the Cape Ann Chamber of Commerce and to 1623 Studios. Goodbye. Goodbye.